introducing Effectrix 2. How exciting. For those of you who are fans of Effectrix 1, I'm sure you're really keen to check out the new features contained in the next edition of this powerhouse effect plugin that automates and sequences and mangles and twists your sound inside out until they're totally different but still sound awesome. My name's Tom and I'm very happy to be showing you the new features today. I'll be doing this over a few videos. This video will be more of a general overview, you know, how the device works. The next video will go through each individual effect and the parameters we have control over. Following on from that, we'll be tackling the new advanced automation system that's for really getting your effect parameters talking. And then the final video, just going to have a bit of fun. We're going to make some sounds, we're going to try some outside of the box things, just generally have a good time. So let's jump right in. Up here on the top, we have the Effectrix 2 logo. Clicking on this will bring up a pop-up. We have our version number, there's links to the menu on the website, and there's also a neat feature where we can choose our own color scheme. Next to that is where our presets live, and I've been skipping through these already with the left and right arrows. If we click on a preset name, we get a pop-up, and then we can browse the presets by category. If you make something you like, just click on the disc icon, Give it a name, and this will be saved into your user preset folder. Next up we have the keyboard. This is where we can store individual configurations of effect settings and sequences for easy recalling on the fly. So simply click on a note, set it up how you like. That will do. And then you can move back and forth between them freely. We can also right click, copy, and paste. This keyboard is MIDI ready, so you can play it with your external keyboard if you're on the standalone version, or you can send it MIDI notes from your host application. And this kind of opens up an interesting possibility of even sequencing these patterns, so you've kind of got patterns within patterns. Next up is the mix section. This is where we decide how we want the processed audio to mix in with the unprocessed audio. We have four options here. A linear mix, which means having this slider in the middle is a nice even 50-50 mix of both. An equal mix, which means we have more of a crossfader style that gives us some attenuation as we move around the center point. A classic dry wet, which lets us mix the processed audio into the unprocessed. And a wet only output, which is effectively 100% processed audio all the time. This slider just becomes a volume control. And up in the top right here, we have undo and redo. So if I go ahead and add a bunch of steps in here and I'm not quite happy with them, I can click on the undo, back, 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 and we can go back. And if I do want to go forward again, I can just click redo. There's also a swing slider, which introduces some shuffle or some swing or some groove into the sequencer. So if you're playing along with a track that naturally has swing or shuffle, you can use this to match it. Moving down a row, we have our playback options. So we can either choose to have the host control the playback. In this case, when I start and stop Ableton Live, you'll see the sequence that follows along. Or we can turn this off and enable the play button. And this lets us choose when to start and stop it manually. Next up is the tempo control. This allows us to set the step resolution so we can speed up or slow down the sequencer. I'm going to keep this on quarter notes. Now we come to the loop area. This allows us to draw our loop markers where we want. So we can click and drag the sides here, shortening and lengthening the loop markers, or we can just click and drag the entire loop marker across and set it where we want it to be. Over on the right, we have the global controls where we can do things like randomize all the sequences. It's, it's worth noting that if I go up to the options here, there's a drop down menu which lets me say how wild the randomization is. So if we want it very light, we'll choose this. And if we want extreme randomization, we can choose this. We've also got clear, copy and paste for our sequences. It's also worth noting that the loop bars determine where the copy and pasting happens. So if I drag this over here, choose copy, and then drag it somewhere else and paste, it'll copy it from there and place it to there. We can also achieve this by dragging the loop marker with the Alt key held down. 
the reset effect order lets us swap the effects back into their original position. Uh, let's use that as a segue into the actual effects themselves. Now I'm going to cover each effect and what it does in depth in the next video, but let's check out their basic functionality. First up, as you might have guessed, we have the order. So the signal flow goes from the top to the bottom and we can switch these effects around. So do you want to modulate the signal before looping it? Or do you want to loop it before you modulate? And here's the effect reset just to show you how it works. Now you'll probably notice me adding steps into the sequencer. I'm just doing that with a left click or a left click and drag to get something with more length. Once I've created a step, I can adjust the length by dragging it or I can just click and move it around. To remove a step, just right click it. There's a drop down menu for each effect over here. We can clear the track, we can randomize it, or we can fill it differently with evenly spaced steps. That's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to have a look at each effect, what it does, and what parameters we have control over. See you then.